how do I get other people to update information without having to email me? It's probably the number one question I get or one of the top questions I get uh, with monday.com. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to send a link to a client and they can then update information relating to their particular item within monday.com. So the business use case is essentially mitigating the data transfer between emails uh, and enabling almost like a client portal so the client can update their information and they can uh, communicate with you without actually having to log into your monday.com system without needing to be a user of your monday.com system. It's an absolutely fantastic feature um, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set it all up. By the way, if you need any help automating, integrating, streamlining your business uh, with either monday.com or any other systems, we would be delighted to help. Check out the link below. Um, maybe we can have a conversation. Anyway, I'm in my monday.com system. This is an example system. I'm going to jump straight to it, waste no more time. So first and foremost, we need to use a plugin. The plugin is called Superforms, one of very few plugins inside of monday.com I would actually recommend. It's an unbelievable tool. So what we need to do to get this plugin first and foremost, because I'm assuming you don't have it, is go to the three dotted button in the top right hand corner, go to power ups and then go to app marketplace. Now, the form we're searching for is called Superforms. Um, just hit search. It's a bestseller. Um, it's free for the first five form submissions, so you can test it. If you're happy with it, check it out. I'm not in any way affiliated with these guys. They just do a really good product. Click Superforms, and then what we need to do is just press Use App down the bottom here, um, and then you need to install it into a workspace and then the board, and then just hit Add App. As you can see, we're on the free plan, so there's no associated cost. Now, you're likely to get this like weird error message thing, and then it kind of changes. It might ask you to just authorize Superforms. Um, obviously, I've used it before in this system, so I haven't got that problem, but it probably will ask you to authorize. Just hit Authorize, and then it's going to load, and it should look exactly like this. Now, we're going to send this form to clients so they can update their own information. There are a series of steps that are required, okay? First and foremost, I'm going to change the color because that blue is absolutely hideous. <laughs> Secondly, cog in the top right-hand corner on Superforms. We need to change this form type from insert to update, okay? All you need to do is just hit that toggle and select I understand and then just hit save. Third and foremost, third and foremost, thirdly, we then need to go ahead and def decide what columns we want visible on the form, what we want editable, what we don't necessarily want editable. So for example, I do not want my name to be editable. I do not want sub items to even be visible. So I just use this I column, sub items go. So no one can create sub items. Project uh, updates, I don't want to be visible. Project gross, I don't want to be visible. Total resource cost, not visible. Time tracking, not visible. Finance, not visible. Quote value, not visible. Quote. Time to close, not visible. Date completed, date created, not visible. Again, you kind of get the idea. Contacts, don't want updated. But the stuff I do want, project deadline, site address, project details, project documents, end date, start time, status, okay? Uh, and then task status as well for all of my sub items and then the project reference, the person as well. So person, I do not want to allow them to update this information. I do not want them to allow the name. The project reference, I don't want them to update. Task status, uh, I might actually just hide that. And this, I'm literally just kind of, as a use case, this is going to be very different to what your board's going to look like. Project deadline, they can update. Site address, they can update. Project details, they can update. Project documents, they can add more project documents, of course. Start date, end time, uh, we'll leave that just as an example for this video. I'm going to hide the status column because I don't want the responsibility of the client or the client to be changing the status of the situation. Um, and now we've kind of got a form in in essence, is very simple and very, very basic. Um, and all I'm gonna do now is just hit preview. So we'll just show you what this form looks like. Again, you can get more sophisticated with how everything looks, um, but you then select an item. So let's just take this one. And you've got name, person, job, project reference, start date, and slight date slash time, end date slash time. Project documents, project details, site address. So you can see everything that's grayed out, I can't edit at all, right? Uh, why is name editable? I thought we'd turn that off. Allow update. No. Oh, that's because I selected it. Sorry. Um, in my own world here. Um, I'll come on to it. Right, just go back. So as you can see, this is the form. We do need to select an item at the moment, but um, we, we, we don't want this as a, like a continued 
approach. So I'm going to show you how to mitigate this particular problem. So they only can update or a client can only update their items. We'll come on to that in a moment. But as you can see, the name automatically populates. Um, the person that pulls all this information from the board, literally like a client portal. The only distinction is that I can't edit name. I can't edit person because I set that permission up. Project reference, I can't change. But the start date time, end date time, project documents, project details, site address and project deadline. These are all data points that I can change. So I'm just going to change this example details for this video. And if I, I'm not going to hit submit yet, if I go back to service, go to my default view, you can see here details about the project. Now, once I, oh, sorry. Now, once I go back and hit submit, you can see here that my, my beautiful spelling error is going to update um, and that information is now updated. Amazing, right? So we've literally created a client portal type system inside of monday.com um, and clients can update their own information with these. It's super, super clever. Um, and then I can submit more information. Now, the big question I know you're all going to be asking is how can I just make it specific to that particular item? So obviously, as it stands, let's say I've got 20 items on this board. So I'm just going to add another one example item. The person using the form would have the option to select which item they want. So if I just hit refresh on here, um, you can see that they've got example item, Nick Boardman dash Google Calendar example. That's from another video. <laughs> if you want to learn how to connect your Google Calendar to monday.com, check out that video. But you can see I can select multiple, right? Now there might be use cases where you do want the client to be able to select multiple. Now you're good to go. You literally set up like this works and you would just share this form. Now in most instances, I think you're only going to want the client to be able to update their item. So I'm just going to show you how to set up that functionality now. So what we need to do is we need to go to the far right hand side. We need to add a new column. It's just going to be a link column. That's it. So, and then we're just going to call this update form link so that's step one in this very non-complex process we then need to go to automate in the top right hand corner go to add automations and we need to define our trigger now for the purpose of this video i'm just going to do when items created so every time a new item is created they get an update form link you can change the trigger to whatever you would like it to be um, there's no obligation to use item created but for the sake of this video when an item is created then i'm just going to scroll down and it's going to be a new option um, you can even just search super forms if you would like to, and you want to select this option, then generate super form link to link column with text. Okay. So then generate super form to link column. So update from link or update form link, sorry, which is the, the column we've just created. And then the text, I'm just going to call this. So it doesn't look like a block of like words and letters and numbers. I'm just going to put uh, update form and just hit enter and just go ahead and press create automation. So now what I've done is every time a new item is created, so I'm going to call this example item number two, it's going to create a new update form link for that very specific item. And let me go ahead and demo. So you can see this is just the automation is just run. This is just automatically populated. Now I'm going to click this form. And what you will notice, right, is that this thing whereas on the original form we had we could select which item we're editing on this one you don't have that it's very specific for that item of course the person the project reference we still can't edit and then the date the end time the start date end date all of this we can edit so now you can begin to understand this functionality now you're probably wondering well i've got all of these items that i've already set up um, and i'm not going to recreate them all so how can i just trigger it for all of them Great question. It's just a case of changing the trigger. So in this case, I'll just create a status column. This is a very temporary status column. I'm just going to call it trigger. Then go to automate uh, in the top right hand corner, add automation. And then I'll just say when status, status changes to anything. Then super form, same functionality, um, update form link. And then with text, update form. You can see where we're going with this, I'm sure. Create automation. And then what I'll do is I'll mass select. So Mac, Command A, uh, Windows, Control A, or if neither of those are working, you can just select them via the groups. And then I'm going to do a mass trigger. So I'm just going to change the status to anything because that was part of the automation that we set up. And you can see here, all of these now, give it a moment when the automation runs. Or did I get something wrong? Hmm, I love it when things don't work. I suspect I probably selected that status as opposed to the trigger. And you probably saw that in the video and thought, what are you doing, you idiot? So go when status, I'm just going to change this to trigger a second. Uh, update because I selected the wrong column. I'm going to go command A, control A or select. Change it to anything again. Um, my bad, I do apologize. Half asleep at the wheel here that will then create update forms for all of 
the existing items we have on the board. So now if I take this one here and click on this form again, it's gonna be unique to this particular item. You can see here, person can't change, project reference can't change, start date time, that's gonna pull the information directly from the existing item. So if I go ahead and change that on the actual board itself, it's gonna reflect on the form and vice versa. Um, obviously, if I change the person, just as an example, uh, so I'll assign this to myself and then just hit refresh, you will be able to see that that person, I am now assigned it. And you can see that and that's reflected in the form. Hopefully this video makes sense. Hopefully uh, you're interested in how this functionality could work for your business. Like I said, if you need any help with stuff like this, automating, integrating, streamlining your business, we would love to help. We don't just work with monday.com, we work with all sorts of different tools. Check out the link below. Obviously I'm sure you guys can think of a million and one use cases for why you would wanna use this. Thank you for watching, goodbye.